President Biden addressed the nation Thursday night for just under 20 minutes in a time of much uncertainty surrounding the escalating war in Israel. During his speech, the president thought it necessary to weave together Russia's invasion of Ukraine with the Hamas attack on Israel. You know, the assault on Israel echoes nearly 20 months of war, tragedy and brutality inflicted on the people of Ukraine, people that were very badly hurt since Putin launched his all-out invasion. Biden went on to say that Hamas and Putin represent different threats, but both want to completely annihilate a neighboring democracy. He expressed deep empathy for Israelis, but continued to caution the Israeli government and said there was solidarity for Gazan civilians. So I caution the government of Israel not to be blinded by rage. In Israel, I saw people who were strong, determined, resilient, and also angry in shock and in deep, deep pain. I also spoke with President Abbas, the Palestinian Authority, and reiterated the United States remains committed to the Palestinian people's right to dignity and to self-determination. Joe Biden provided very little in terms of the path ahead, but according to the White House, he is asking Congress for $105 billion for Ukraine, Israel, and other domestic programs. Greg. It's been two and a half weeks since Kevin McCarthy was ousted as Speaker of the House. This morning, Jim Jordan, the Republican who's now failed to gain the needed 217 needed votes to take the gavel, held a press conference in part to make his case why the American people deserve to have a functioning House of Representatives. Right now, those people, I think, are starting to doubt and wonder about their government and about where our nation is headed. They see an open border. They see crime in the streets. They know what it costs to put gas in their car. They know what it costs to put food on the table. They see a war in Israel, our strongest ally, Israel, and what's happening there, and the help that Israel needs. And they see a government that's been weaponized against we, the people. About 45 minutes ago on the House floor, Jim Jordan, for the third time, failed to get enough votes to become Speaker once again. Several House Republicans think the 22 colleagues voting against Jordan for Speaker are doing it in spite of Matt Gates. Gates led the vacate the chair vote to successfully remove Kevin McCarthy as Speaker on October the 3rd. The Florida representative continues to take heat from fellow House Republicans for taking out McCarthy. Arizona Republican Representative Andy Biggs told the Daily Caller, quote, I've been told by a good number of people that the objection isn't personal to Jim. It's that voting in Jordan is perceived to be rewarding Matt Gates and the rest of the eight. South Carolina Republican Representative Nancy Mace, who supports Jordan, told the caller, quote, voting against the will of your constituents to get back at a fellow member of the def is the definition of the swamp, end quote. We're following this developing story. and We will keep you updated. Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene appeared on Flashpoint last night. The Republican talked to Jean Bailey about pro-Hamas, pro-Palestinian rally that took place at the Capitol on Wednesday. Washington, D.C., Marjorie Taylor Greene. Congresswoman, welcome back to Flashpoint. It's been a while. Good to have you Thanks with us. Thanks for having me on today. Yeah. All right. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at where you were yesterday. You know, Congresswoman, that, that's a scary sight to most Americans. You were up there looking down from that balcony. It looked eerily familiar. It quickly spilled into the Cannon Building, looking suspiciously like an insurrection to me. Tell me, from your perspective, what happened yesterday? Uh, that's exactly what it, it looked like, and it was. And, and there was security intel the day before that they were coming, that there would be pro-Palestinian protests. They even said that members of Congress should use the tunnels that go under the road to the Capitol. And there was also intel for the Capitol Police that they would be targeting members of Congress. Well, Rashida Tlaib and the squad led the mob the, of the pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas protesters. You saw right there on video, and they led them uh, all the way up Pennsylvania and Constitution to the Cannon House building. They came into our office building, which is where my office is, and they completely took over the rotunda. The Capitol Police ended up arresting hundreds of these people. And I want you to know, Gene, these were not simple Jewish protesters. You can see from that video right there, they were organized, they were orchestrated, they're also funded because 
because we were able to identify who they really are and they were not simple, peaceful protesters wanting a ceasefire. That's a complete lie. And I've got a letter here uh, from you uh, where you're demanding Capitol Police preserve all records and video relating to the event yesterday. Sh do you think or should we expect an October 18th commission uh, to address this insurrection? There, certain, there certainly should be one, Gene, and I'll tell you right now, uh, we were able to take pictures of many of the organizers' phones as they were texting one another. Um, we identified these people as uh, Jewish Voice for Peace. Uh, the ADL themselves calls this a radical anti-Israel group. That's who they are. We also identified names um, and connected them with the Southern Poverty Law Center. We've also connected them on one uh, phone that had a group chat called Global. Global Intifada. And if you look up the term Intifada, it means Arabic uprising and rebellion, which is similar to jihad. So these are very dangerous radicals. I want those records uh, preserved because not only do we need an investigation, there should be criminal referrals. And I'm also introducing a resolution to censure Rashida Tlaib because she does not represent American values uh, and Israel is our greatest ally. She does not stand with Israel. As a matter of fact, she hates Israel as much as she hates America. How is it that Tlaib and her squad continue to get a pass from the press? What, what's the deal here? You would think at this point this would be American press would go, wait a minute, this is wrong, while they're still spreading the Hamas lies about what's actually happening in Gaza. Why is that, Congresswoman? She's a liar and she's an actress. She's an actress just like those protesters were uh, in their orchestrated campaign and they were acting like they want peace. But in reality, none of them ever said that Hamas should be handed over and tried for war crimes, for the horrific murders uh, that took place in, in Israel when Hamas came across the border and murdered innocent Israelis, women and children, grandparents, kidnapping them and murdering them later. Um, no, they didn't denounce any of that. And that's that's exactly who Rashida Tlaib. She's a terrorist sympathizer. Um, she's like having a Hamas member. You can watch the entire interview at GoVictory.com slash Flashpoint. Mike? This is what happens when you have certain people in Congress that are more interested in jumping in front of a camera than getting the work of the American people done. There are good people like Jim Jordan that, that would have done a good job here. But now once you start to collapse this whole thing, and again, I put this on Gates, I, I think it's ridiculous. You, you know, when we run, especially as conservatives, when we run and say we want to get things done for people, stop doing stuff like this, which completely flies in the face of that and you end up with people that are just mugging for the camera versus doing what's good for the American people this is ridiculous and now Mike I don't know what you do what do you do 60 days with McHenry to bridge the gap because right now there is no path to a speaker at this point now think about this for a second Kevin McCarthy took 15 votes to become speaker in January if you were Jim Jordan would you stick around for more votes or would you move on well, Mike, it's going the wrong way. And so what you're seeing more and more is initially you saw the number much lower that opposed Jordan. And now we're up to what you mentioned. Was it 25? Is that the number? Yes. Yes. Okay. So so now now you're up. At, now you're not even close, Mike. You're, you're 20 votes away. I mean, that's not even anywhere near. So you could continue to be a glutton for punishment and show back up. But the problem is this becomes more and more of a clown show that each time you have a vote and the Democrats love it. The Democrats love it. That's the problem with all of this yeah. is that you've taken the focus away from real problems. Families can't afford groceries. They can't afford to fill their tank with gas. You have issues in the Middle East that are spinning out of control and expanding and what do we have? If we want to be leaders in this country, step up and do the job and stop doing performative politics that ends up putting the American people in the back seat of a camera crew because Matt Gates wants to get more attention. It absolutely drives me crazy.